Okay, I'm going to attempt to find the solution to the Brachistochrone problem. So this is a, a famous problem where you, you imagine starting at some point and you want to get to another point, the lowered point, along a frictionless path. And the question is what's, what path gets there in the least amount of time? Not the shortest distance, the least amount of time. It's kind of a bogus problem, to tell you the truth, because you need some tricks to solve, and that's why I don't like it. It's not a bogus problem, it's a great problem, but I don't like tricks, and there are some tricks here, and I'm probably gonna make a mistake, but I'm plowing through this for you guys, okay? So let's start with the fundamental idea here, because we want to not find the minimum time, what well, we do, but we wanna find the path that gives the minimum time. So it's not a normal maximum problem, it's something different. So instead, think of it, uh, as it's this is calculus of variations. So here is the big deal. If I have this integral, some integral that's a, uh, evaluating the function that depends on y, y prime, where y prime is dy dx, x and as a, integrating over x, that's my. I want to I want to minimize the in the function that minimizes this integral. I want to find the function that minimizes the integral. The function that minimizes this integral will be uh, the one that also satisfies this Euler-Lagrange equation. Actually, this is a stationary state. So it could it's just like with the maximum problem. It could give a minimum time or maximum time. Okay, But if I take that function and I take the partial of the function with respect to y, I subtract the derivative with respect to x of the partial of f with respect to y prime and set that equal to zero, that constraint on the function will be the one that gives me the, the minimizes this problem. Okay, so that, that's actually cool. This is not cool. So let's, let's start off with a couple of things. Number one, I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to end up down here at this point, and I'm going to call this the y direction. So I want to find the time it takes to go down this path, and so I can say the time is going to be equal to the integral from, I'm actually going to integrate over y, okay, which is a little bit different, from y1 to y2 ds over v. So ds over v is the time it takes to move along this little path, and so I'm just going to add up all those times, and that's what this integral is. So the first thing I need to do is uh, deal with ds. So if I have this, this is dx, this is dy, then ds it's going to be the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Um, so I want to get this as a function of, uh, I want to factor out the dy. So this is going to be ds. It's going to be the integral of dx squared dy squared, not the second derivative, plus 1 times dy. So I factored out the dy. Now this term right here, and that goes all the way down, this is equal to the square root of the second derivative, the derivative, it's not the second derivative, I just said that. The derivative of x with respect to y squared, so this is gonna be x prime squared plus one dy. Now, up here, I did this as a, we usually write this as a function of x. I'm switching this to y, which trick number one, because this is, this is uh, have a little trick tally up here. Tricks. Actually, I have two. Two tricks. Trick number one was putting the, the positive y-axis going down. Uh, trick number two is switching to this in terms of y instead of x. Okay. So that's my ds. That's cool. Now for the velocity, I can use work energy. So if I start at rest up here and I include the earth and the bead as my system, then there's no work done, and the change in potential is equal to the change in kinetic. So if it ends up down here at some y value, I can say, uh, yeah, that's right, 0 equals the, the final y potential, which is going to be mg y minus initial, which is 0, plus the final kinetic energy, actually this should be minus, the final minus initial the final is one half m v squared. See, I've already made a mistake. I should have another one for mistakes up here. If that's y, oh, if that's y, then 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 the potential has to be negative mg. That's right. Okay. 
So now if I solve this for V, I get V equals the square root of 2GY. That's not a trick. That's just true. Okay. So now I have DS. I have V. So I have I can get the integral T. It's going to be equal to the integral from Y equals 1, Y1 to Y2 of DS, which is this, square root of X prime squared plus 1 dy over the square root of 2gy. And so let's write this as 1 over the square root of 2g. Not really a trick, it's just common sense. Uh, from y1, and I can go ahead and put y1 of uh, from 0, let's just write it as y1 to y2. Square root of x prime squared plus 1, that's x prime squared, that's not x to the 12th, divided by y dy. Okay, are we good? Please say yes. Okay, because I'm not good. I'm already starting to feel a little, a little uh, ideas here about how this is not going to go. But I will say this, f is going to be equal to this function. So it's the square root of x prime squared plus 1 over y because that's just right there, and it looks like that form. So now I can plug this into here. That's what I'm going to do. So let me write this again. f equals the square root of x prime squared plus 1 over y. That's all square rooted. So I need to take the partial. Now, let me go ahead and write this. I'm going to have the partial of f with respect to x minus the derivative with respect to y partial of f with respect to x prime equals 0, which is backwards from the way that I wrote it before, because remember, that was that trick number 1, so still not a trick, we're still on that same one. So I'm going to first start off with this, the partial of f with respect to x. This is a partial derivative, and you'll notice there is no x in that, so that's 0. Yay. Now I need to do the partial of f with respect to x prime, so that's going to be equal to, uh, let me rewrite, this is um, to the one-half power, so let's see, f equals, um, let's write this as x prime squared plus 1 to the one-half over y to the one-half. Is that okay? Okay. So I have to use the chain rule, so it's gonna, I'm going to bring the one-half down, so I get one-half times x prime squared plus 1 and they have to reduce this by 1, I get minus 1 half. And they have to take the derivative of the inside, and it's going to be the derivative of x prime squared. It's going to be 2x prime. And then I have to, there, this is a partial with respect to y, so that x prime, so that stays the same. These 2's cancel, and I get uh, x prime over the square root of y times x prime squared plus 1. Huh, okay, I think that's right. I'm just checking my notes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now, I, I would take the derivative of this with respect to y, right? The real derivative. But, since this term is 0, then the derivative of this with respect to y has to be 0. So, um, that means this is equal to a constant. Right, because if the derivative of this uh, is zero, then this has to be equal to a constant. So now let me go back to my trick board, and I'm gonna say, let's, I'm gonna square both sides of this. And I'm gonna, so if I square, if it's equal to a constant, I, it's a constant squared, who cares what it's called? And this is, I'm gonna count this as two tricks, okay? So I'm gonna say x prime squared over y times y prime squared, no, that's x prime, plus 1 equals 1 over 2a. Because this is uh, this squared, and then I made the constant 2a. So that's a trick. I'm going to go back over here and keep my trick tally. I'm going to count that as 2, because I squared it, and I set it equal to this weird constant. Okay, so now uh, let's multiply both sides by, let's just cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply 2a over here, I'm going to multiply this over there, and I get 2a 
x prime squared equals, uh, and I'm going to multiply this out, y x prime squared plus y. I want to solve for x prime, so I'm going to subtract this from both sides. I feel like I'm making a mistake, but let's say, let's do that. So I get x prime squared times 2a minus y equals y. So x prime squared equals y over 2a minus y. I don't like the 2. That's a 2. Where'd that 2 come from? Oh, I set it down here. I did that. Hmm. I'm not sure why I put the 2 there. Okay, just keep going forward. You know, it might have to do with... It might have to do with this, but I have a feeling... I, you know what? I'm making progress, and if I don't actually get it right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just keep going, because uh, I'm showing you tricks, right? Um, so anyway, where next? So if this is x prime squared, then x prime would be equal to the square root of that. And this is equal to dx dy. So if I multiply both sides by dy and integrate, then I get x is going to be the integral from y1 to y2 of this square root of y over 2a minus y dy. So all I have to do is integrate that. Uh, and, and that's not easy to do. So again, time for another trick. So we're up to 5. So the trick is to say let y equal a minus a cosine theta. So I can substitute that in up here, but then I also have a dy, so I need to find dy. dy is going to be the derivative of a, which a is a constant, and then the derivative of this is going to be, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, so it's going to be a sine theta d theta. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that means I get the in, x is going to be the following. I don't normally have three sheets of paper here. Okay. So now I have x equals the integral from, I'm going to leave off the limits of integration because I'm not happy. Uh, and I get, I need to put it in for y. So that's going to be a times 1 minus cosine theta. So it's going to be the square root of a times 1 minus cosine theta. And then I'm going to get over down here, I have uh, over 2a minus y, which is going to be minus a plus a cosine theta. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, and then I have d theta, which is a sine theta d theta. And see, so I'm going to actually have to integrate this over the, the function over limits of theta. That's why I didn't put that down. Okay, so this is going to be x equals the integral. Um, I have an a, 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 a. All those a's cancel, but I have that a right there. So I have uh, a. What happened to my square root? I think it doesn't matter. Okay, that square root of 1 over 2g. I don't think that matters. Uh, so then I have up here 1 minus cosine theta. And this is going to be 2 minus 1 is 1. So I have 1 plus cosine theta. And then I have sine theta d theta. So if I want to bring sine theta into the integral, then I need to square it. So it's going to be equal to a, this integral sine squared theta, 1 minus cosine theta, d theta, 1 plus cosine theta. You know, I, I feel like this is going to count as another trick. 
it's so I'm gonna count it as a trick because I want to say I'm gonna go ahead and count it up trick trick counter I'm gonna say uh, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1 that's not a trick but this is if I write this as sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta right and this is equal to 1 plus cosine theta times 1 minus cosine theta. I feel like that's another trick. I'm going to count that as another trick because I feel tricked. And I really like racking up those tricks. Is that right? Because I get 1 times 1, I get, yeah, that's right. So now if I substitute that in, I get x equals a times the integral of the square root of sine squared theta, which is this, 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta, all of that over 1 plus cosine theta, d theta. Okay, oh look, that cancels. That That's not a trick, right? Because I've already used the trick to make that happen. And then I have 1 minus cosine theta squared, square rooted, oh, well that's just 1 minus cosine theta. So now I get a times the integral of 1 minus cosine theta d theta. I can actually integrate that. So I can integrate this is going to be a times the integral of d theta is this going to be theta. And then I have a times minus cosine theta is going to be equal to, is that minus or plus sine theta? Why am I, it's minus. Minus a sine theta, right, because that's right. And I, and I didn't evaluate the limits, okay, because I don't really care. I'm going to get a parameterized equation. So there's my value for x. And then I have also my value for y, which is y equals a minus a cosine theta. So what I can do is pick theta and then calculate x and y. And that is my function. This is my function, and this is a cycloid. I actually did it without making a mistake. Um, and and so uh, just yeah, it, the the path is would look like um, I think what it is if you took this and then you took a circle and then you let it roll, and then you plotted uh, the motion of a point as this thing rolls it would look like this and that's your path okay and that's the Brachista Chrome problem and that's the path of shortest distance and that is with me being uh, conservatively seven tricks okay seven tricks to get this done and I don't like that so it's not the best problem but I did it so there you go I'll talk to you guys later